What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to iterate through NumPy arrays in NumPy. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to iterate through NumPy arrays. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, up until now, we've been building NumPy arrays and kind of learning about them a little bit. In this video, I want to iterate through them. So you're going to have NumPy arrays. There's going to be one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, n dimension, however many. And at some point, you're going to want to iterate through those NumPy arrays and see what's inside of them and do stuff with the information, the data that's in them. How do we do that? Well, we could start out with basic NumPy arrays of one to two dimensions, even three dimensions, really, with a basic Python for loops. And that's what we're going to start out with. But after that, it gets a little tricky with all the embedded loops that you're going to have to do. And we'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other NumPy videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file. I'm just calling it it.py, short for iterate, I guess. And we're just importing NumPy as np, as we always do. So let's just really quickly create a one-dimensional NumPy array. So let's call it np1. And this is going to be an np.array. We know how to do this. We've done this a bunch of times. And here we just want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I don't know, 9, 10, whatever. So to iterate through this, and let's just print out each item, each element, each scalar, I suppose, in this array onto the screen. So to do that, we're going to create a basic for loop. So let's go 4x in np1. And this is just pure Python. If you know anything about Python, this is just a for loop, right? So here we just want to print x. Super simple really easy. So let's go ahead and save this, head over to our terminal, and let's run python it.py, and boom, it just prints out 1 through 10. Super easy. That's a one-dimensional NumPy array. That's all there is to it. So that's great. If you've got a one-dimensional NumPy array, you know, that's no big deal. So let's now go to a 2D array. So let's go mp2, and this is going to be an mp.array. And inside of here, we just want a basic Two dimensional array, and let's just go one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so now if we wanted to do a for loop, let's go 4x in np2, and let's just again print out x and see what it's gonna do. Now, this should print out our two dimensions, our two rows. And in fact, I can just sort of comment print rows, All right? That's gonna print this row and then this row which that may be what you want, but maybe not. So let's just take a look at this real quick. Clear the screen, run this guy again. And again, we just get each row printed. Okay, that's cool. That's 2D. But what if we want to get inside of each of these rows? How do we do that? Well, we need to embed another array, right? So let's go for Y in X. And now we're looping through this X, which if you remember is you know, this will be X and this will be X. Each of these rows is X. So we're saying, hey, take each of these rows and then loop through that row. That will give us the individual items in our array. So here we can print out. Uh, this time we want to print out Y, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And now we get the individual items printed out one at a time on the screen. So that's cool. Again, that's not that hard. We got a couple of for loops, one for loop embedded into another for loop. We can wrap our brains around that and that's not too difficult, right? You know, now let's get into a three dimensional array. And let me just comment all this out. And let's go 3D array. Now it's gonna get a little tricky. So let's go MP3 equals an MP dot array. And even just creating these things, let me just do it like this. It's a little bit harder to wrap our brains around creating a 3D array. So let's go one, two, three. And then inside of here, we'll go four, five, six. And then another comma. And then let's go two of these and go seven, eight, nine. And another comma. And then 10, 11, 12. And then we need a couple of closing brackets. Maybe another one. There we go. So one, two, three, four on the side. Nope, that doesn't seem right at all. Uh, there we go. We need another one there. Okay. So we've got 
one dimension. I guess you could think of two dimension, three dimension. I don't know. Maybe you could think of it like that. Either way, it's starting to get complicated, right? So here, if we, again, let's just go for X in MP3 and let's just print out X, right? Let's see what this is going to look like. Let's clear the screen. And we're going to get this weird sort of thing here that, all right, that kind of makes sense. But we want to dive in a little deeper. That's just the first dimension, basically, right? So we can do another one. So let's go for Y in X. And let's print out Y. And this is going to get a little bit better, right? So, okay, a little more readable, but it's still not the individual items in each of these rows. How do we do that? Well, we need to embed yet another one. Let's comment this out. Now let's go for Z in Y. And now we want to print out Z. Okay, this is getting a little crazy, right? But we can do it and boom, it'll print out each item. And that's ultimately probably what we want. So, okay, still sort of doable, but this is getting crazy, right? It just is. We're embedding loops inside of loops inside of loops. And it's just, I don't know, I don't like it, right? So there's an easier way. So let's look at that real quick. Let me comment this stuff out. And here we want to use something called ND iter, right? Or you might want to say numpy dot ND iter, right? Because everything we do with numpy starts with NP because remember up here we're importing numpy as NP. So if we want to do that, let's use this sim, the same array. And here we just have to loop once. So here let's go for X in. Now, instead of going NP3 like we have before, what we want to do is we want to loop through NP.ND iter and then pass NP3 into that, right? So that will do what we want. If we now print X, go ahead and save this, head back over here. Let's clear this screen. Now, boom, it's going to iterate through the individual items, the scalars of that NumPy array. So you don't have to embed loop inside of loop inside of loop. This ND iter will just sort of know, hey, we want to get down to the very basic level of whatever this array is. And this is a 3D array. You can have a 5D array, a 110D array, whatever it is, it will get right down into the most basic level. If that's what you're looking for, then ND iter is what you want. Otherwise, you could just sort of play around with these different embedded loops however you want and uh, do it like that. So basically, I mean, we can do the same thing right here with NP1, right? So if we come back up here and uncomment this out, this is just a one dimensional array. If we run this guy, it will also just get through the, to the base level, right? Of that array. In this case, there's only one dimension, so it doesn't have to do a lot of work. What I mean is you don't have to use ND iter on super complicated multi-dimensional arrays. You could do it on a 1D array if you want. I don't know why you'd want to. You would just use a basic for loop, which you could. And same thing with the 2D array. You could use it on a 2D array. But, you know, these two for loops embedded in each other are still not that complicated. It might just be easier to do that. Or, you know, you can just use that. So it's totally up to you. So there are more things about iterating that you might want to learn about. This video is getting a little bit long, so we're going to stop it right there. But this is the basics of iterating through NumPy arrays. Not too tricky. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com, and I'll see you in the next video.